Thank you so much, good brother, for that for that prayer, Doctor Thomas. Thank you, thank you, um, just for giving me this opportunity to speak to these great people of God that you shepherd and 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 speak to on a daily basis. My big brother, like I said, I, I he he's the only he is the only brother in our fellowship, out of our fellowship, I call big brother. And, and so big brother, I, I thank you. Thank you for God um, bringing you into my life. You've, you've made me a better man, a better preacher. And I'm grateful. And, and, and Roosevelt, you all already know you all have a great, I mean, a great treasure in your, in your midst. And we're just, we're just grateful for God's many blessings. We're grateful for um, Roosevelt family for you all being here all week, um, even if you wasn't here all week, just for you coming out and supporting the vision that your man of God has said. We're grateful, grateful to um, a couple of members of Jackson Street who's been on here just about all week 
Sister Amos and Brother Batson, thank you so much. Thank you so much. We're just grateful. And for this last installment, um, your, your, your pastor said something, and 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 Doctor Thomas, I'm gonna switch gears, bro. You don't even gotta share that picture. The, the spirit speaking to me to to switch gears, um, in something that was that was said, and you all are fasting, and and one of the things about fasting is fasting allows you to hear the voice of the Lord, and so I wanna I want the spirit is telling me to shift gears from what I prepared to do to talk about um hearing the voice of the Lord and. And and we're going to do that from the book of Jeremiah. And but before we do that, somebody once said, and I, and I wrote it down, that that when we're born, we look like our parents. But when we die, we look like our decisions. In other words, our decisions are extremely important. And in our process of decision making. All of us have experienced this a few times and somebody is probably experiencing this right now. And you're probably experiencing the idea or the question of should I stay or should I go? When it comes to jobs, when it comes to relationships, when it comes to business opportunities, when it comes to schooling, when it comes to the military, when it comes to ministry, we wrestle with the, the the question of of should I stay, Lord? Is it is it is it time for me to go or or should I stay? And what I want to do on this morning, since since some of you are in the, in the process of fasting, want to um, give you a biblical prescription on how that question is answered on should I stay. Or should I go? We're going to be coming from Jeremiah um, chapter 42. And before you go to Jeremiah chapter 42, I want you to make a stop at Jeremiah chapter 40 and hold your finger at verse 15. Um, Jeremiah, as many of us know, who is referred to as the weeping prophet, the majority of his book is not in chronological order. But there are certain sections that are in chronological order, um, and that's the aftermath of the Jeru of the destruction of Jerusalem. It starts at chapter forty, runs all the way to chapter forty-five. Those pieces, that piece of it, is in chronological order, and there are like three, two to three major scenes that transpires from chapter forty to chapter forty. Five. One of the major scenes that that transpires is is that Gedalia is assassinated. Now, if you if you remember, and I'm glad I got a little bit of extra time on today. Um, um, thank you for that, Doctor Thomas, and, and everything. I'm normal. I try to be short winded, but I might be long winded on <laughs> on purpose this morning. If you remember, Nebuchadnezzar had conquered Jerusalem. Y'all, you all remember that. And he burned down the city, it tore down the walls. And you and you remember even before that how Daniel, the three Hebrew boys, they were exiled. Ezekiel, they were exiled. And now we are looking at the scene that Jerusalem has been completely destroyed. After, after Jerusalem is destroyed, Nebuchadnezzar, installs a man by the name of Gedalia to rule over the land as his representative. And, and what is amazing about it was, is that um, while Gedalia was ruling, everything was sort of calming down in a sense and everything. But, but, but then in Jeremiah 40 and verse 15, our first stop before we get to our main part of our text, the Bible says, then Jehoan, the son of Korea, spoke secretly to Gedaliah and Mizpah, saying, um, let me go, please, and I will kill Ishmael, the son of Nathaniel, and no one will know it. Why should he murder you so that all the Jews who are gathered to you would be scattered and the remnant in Judah perish. In other words, 
Um, a guy by the name of Johan went and spoke to Gedalia and said, Gedalia, word on the street is, is that Ishmael going to knock you off. And, and and we don't need for him to knock you off because we're doing sort of good right now. Even though the city been destroyed, you know, the Jews are sort of together, sort of peaceful. But 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 this guy who in your presence, smiling in your face, is actually planning on knocking you off. So he tells Gedalia, let me go kill him before he kills you. But 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 Gedalia. Um, later on in the text, basically does nothing about it, does nothing about it. And so this man who, who he had warned Gedalia about Ishmael wanting to kill him, Ishmael ends up killing him, which is the sad part. And, and, and this ain't my lesson, but I'll drop this off. You can be godly while not being gullible. I'll say that again. You can be godly while not being gullible. Um, Gedalia was gullible. He was warned that the man that was smiling in his face was plotting on stabbing him in the back, but he did nothing about it. He got killed. When he got killed, Jehoan, who had warned Gedalia about the assassination plot, he, he, he caught up with Ishmael and he rescued the people out of Ishmael's hand. Because remember now, Ishmael, Ishmael would kill Gedalia. So Johanan caught up with Ishmael and he rescued the remnant from Ishmael. Now, now when we come to chapter um, 41, look at 41. Go to chapter 41 and we're going to start at verse 16. I want, I want to show you this because they got a dilemma on their hand. If you know anything about Nebuchadnezzar, this this like Tyler Perry, the haves and the have-nots. If you know any, it's, it's this like power, this like Ghost and Tommy on power, power book one and power book two. If you know anything about Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar don't play. Nebuchadnezzar don't play. So you can imagine when when they they thought when word get back to Nebuchadnezzar, how we have killed his man in charge. Nebuchadnezzar going to come back and he going to show up, bust some heads. So in Jeremiah chapter 41 and verse 16, the Bible says, Then Johan, or Johanan, the son of Korea, and all the commanders of the forces that were with him took from Mizpah all the remnant of the people whom he had recovered from Ishmael, the son of Nathaniel, after he had struck and killed Gedalia, the son of Ahakam, that is the men who were soldiers, the women, the children, and the high officials whom he had brought back from Gibeon. Watch verse 17. And they went and stayed in Geruf Tehemim, which is beside Bethlehem, in order to proceed into Egypt because of the Chaldeans, for they were afraid of them since Ishmael, the son of Nathaniel, had struck and killed Gedaliah, the son of Ahakam, whom the king of Babylon had appointed over the land. Then all the, 42 and one, then all of the commanders of the forces, Johanan, the son of Korea, Jezniah, the son of Hoshia, and all the people from the small to the great approached and said to Jeremiah the prophet, please let our pleading come before you and pray for us to the Lord your God for all this remnant, since we have been left only a few out of many, just as your own eyes now see us. Watch this, that the Lord your God will tell us the way in which we should walk and the thing we should do. I'm gonna put a pen right here, listen. So after, after Johanan um, recovers the people, they begin to go to Egypt because they know we know Nebuchadnezzar gonna bust our head up. Halfway of going to Egypt, they say, you know what? We need to ask the man of God, what should we do? 
Now they should have asked that in the first place, but they already started the plan. And they like, you know what? Let's go ask Jeremiah to pray for us so we can know which way the Lord want us to do. So that's that's the context. They are coming to Jeremiah asking for direction. Uh, 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 should we go ahead and leave and go to Egypt? Because we know Nebuchadnezzar is going to bust our head. Watch verse number, watch, 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 watch verse number four. And the only reason they would go to Egypt, because historically at this time, Egypt was the only free country that was not under Babylonian rule at this time. And so they say, man, we want to go to, we, we want to go to a place where Nebuchadnezzar not ruling at. Watch verse four. Watch verse four. We're getting ready to get to our main points. Then Jeremiah the prophet said to them, I have heard you. Behold, I'm going to pray to the Lord your God in accordance with your words. I will tell you the whole message which the Lord gives you as an answer. I will not withhold a word from you. Then watch this. Then they said to Jeremiah, May the Lord be a true and faithful witness against us if we do not act in accordance with the whole message with which the Lord your God will send you to us, whether it is pleasant or unpleasant. Watch this. We will listen to the voice of the Lord our God to whom we are sending you so that it may go well for us when we listen to the voice of the Lord our God. Watch verse number seven, coming to my first point. Now, at the end of 10 days, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Listen, Jeremiah said, let me go talk to God about this. It was at the end of 10 days that the Lord sent the answer. What you need to rec uh, um, realize about the number 10, number 10 is also synonymous with testimony, with law, with responsibility. It is synonymous with the completeness of order. It is, if you remember, the Passover lamb was selected on the 10th day of the first month. That's Exodus 12 and 3. Um, God said 10 times in Genesis chapter one, not only, not only that. And, 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 and so when you, when, when you look at the word 10, it means that at the complete time at, on God's order. And, 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 and what is, what is amazing to me about it is Jeremiah started praying 10, 10 days earlier, but the response didn't come to 10 days later. And it speaks to that when we are trying to discern the will of God for our life, or, or Lord, what should I do? Should I stay or should I go? The answer never comes really immediately. i say that again. I'll say that again. I'll, I'll say that again. Now, I'm not saying it's impossible, but rarely when you praying for whatever you praying for, there is a waiting period between the request and the answer. God sometimes will allow some time to elapse before he gives you the answer that you need to hear. But faith causes us to wait for the answer. Faith causes us to be like, Lord, I'm awake till I hear you speaking in my spirit. Lord, I'm awake um, after I fasted. I'm a fast and wait and pray because I know, Lord, that if I wait, even though it, you may not give me the answer on my time, you will be on time. Just like how we wait for the first of the month for our SSI check to hit, we got to wait for the Lord. Just like how we wait for our medicine to work, we got to wait for the Lord. Just like how the Boston Celtics have to wait eight years with Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, we got to wait for the Lord. The text is showing that there was a waiting period. There was a seeking God in prayer before the answer was given now. Now, now that's the that that that's the first point. Now, now as we get to the main point, these if you remember, this group says that whatever the voice of the Lord says, you know, we're gonna listen to his voice, even if it's an answer we don't want to hear. Watch verse nine. Watch verse nine. Woo! 42 and 9 and said to them, 
This is what the Lord says, the God of Israel, to whom you sent me to present your plea before him. Ooh, watch this now. Good Lord. Good. If you will indeed stay in this land, then I will build you up and not tear you down. Watch, watch the wheels. God says, I will plant you and not uproot you for I will relent of the disaster that I have inflicted on you. Do not be afraid of the king of Babylon whom you are now fearing, do not be afraid of him, declares the Lord, for I am with you to save you and to rescue you from his hand. Watch verse number 12. Ooh, I will also show you compassion so that he will have compassion on you and restore you to your own soil. But if you say, we will not stay in this land so as not listen to the voice of the Lord your God saying, no, we will go to the land of Egypt. We will not see war or hear the sound of a trumpet or hunger for bread and we will stay there. Then in that case, then in that case, listen to the word of the Lord. You remnant of Judea, this is what the Lord of armies, the God of Israel say. If you really set your minds to enter Egypt and go and reside there, then the sword of which you are afraid will overtake you there in the land of Egypt and the famine about which you are anxious will follow closely after you there in Egypt and you will die there. Let's stop. Let's stop because I've read quite a bit. Let's go all the way back up to verse number 10. God says in verse 10, if you stay in this land, I'm going to build you up and not tear you down. I'm going to plant you and not uproot you. As a matter of fact, I'll even relent of the disaster that I've inflicted on you. In other words, God is telling them that if you stay in this land, God say, I'm going to turn your circumstances around. Ooh, Jesus. Now, well, now, 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 Dr. Thomas, this is what make me shout. Now, you, we know Jerusalem was burned down. We know Jerusalem was raggedy. We know all that area, man. It, it, it wasn't nothing out there in that area. Except, 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 except everything torn down. God is telling them, if you stay, I want you to stay in the mess because I'm going to rebuild your life. Out of the mess, good Lord. God said, God says that I know it don't look good. I, I, I know where you're at, don't look good right about now. But God said, I'm gonna get some glory because I'm gonna rebuild your life out of this mess. In other words, God said, I will build you up, Lord, but the city burned down. I'm going to rebuild you up, Lord, but the gates turned down. I'm going to turn it around for you. Lord, it's crazy. It's dark around here. God says, I'm going to bless you if you stay where you need to stay. And Lord have mercy. Now, now one of the things about God, y'all come here, y'all come here. I don't know if y'all, I hope y'all feeling this. One of the things about God is that is that while God character remains the same, God will switch it up. <laughs> Say that again. While God's character remains the same, God will switch his methodology up. So what 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 the way God handled it five years ago when you was asking for direction, God may not handle that thing the same way. You may not get the same answer. In other words, God says, I want you to stay. But if you know anything about, about God, God a while back told him, I need for y'all to go. What you mean by that? In Jeremiah chapter 21 and verse number nine, when they were trying to decide, this was, be this was before the city was torn down. Um, they were trying to decide should they stay or go before Nebuchadnezzar tore, tore the city down. And in Jeremiah 21 and 9, um, Jeremiah says, anyone who stays in this city will die by the sword, by famine, or by plague. But anyone who leaves and goes over to the Chaldeans who are besieging you will live and he will have his own life as a plunder. What you're telling me, Brother Jackson? That, that, that there was a time before that God wanted them to leave. But this time God said, I don't want you to leave. I want you to save. 
And so you can't, while we trust the character of God, that he never changes in who he is, his methodologies will change. So because God wanted you to do it this way three years ago, that don't mean he wants you to do it that same way today because our God will switch it up. And, and, and one of the things these, 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 these people say, they say, they say in verse six and in verse 13, um, um, there, there is a phrase that is mentioned, listening to the voice of the Lord. In other words, obeying the voice of the Lord. In other words, I truly believe that it was not all about the city. It was about obeying the voice of God, even when it looks bad. Because what may look bad may not actually be bad when God is involved. Then what may look good may not be good when God is not involved. I'm going to say that again. Um, what looks bad in your life may not be bad when God is involved. But what looks good may not be good when God is not involved, which means God's involvement, God's presence in your storm, in your mess, it makes up the difference. And sometimes, ooh, sometimes, sometimes as I, in our life, we pray and we like, Lord, I'm tired of this job. I'm tired of dealing with these people, this supervisor, backstabbing co-workers. And we like, Lord, I, I'm praying that I, I want to go. Sometimes God is saying, it ain't the time for you to go. God, but it look bad. God speaking to us in our spirit as we, as we fast, that no nah, son, no nah, daughter, just hold what you got. Stay in there because I got plans for you that you don't even see. And, and you got to have faith in my word, what I'm speaking to you in your spirit, that 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 what you can't see, I got it under control. And so, baby girl, just listen to my voice in this moment, because if you listen to my voice, it's going to be all right. I know you crying. I know you shedding tears. I know they make you cuss sometimes. I know sometimes they make you want to give up. But right now, I need for you to stay because your blessing is tied to you staying. My glory is seen in you staying because you only somebody can say it was nobody but God if you stay and it go from bad to good. I know it's ransacked. I know it's crazy. But just listen to my voice right about now. Are y'all are, are y'all with me? I wanna, I wanna, I, I wanna share this. I wanna share this illustration with you. Then the lesson, like I said, the lesson gonna be yours. Lesson gonna be yours because I'm, I'm encouraging somebody that that it's not about should you stay or should you go. It's about what is God speaking to you in your crisis. That's what matters. That as you fast, Lord, let me hear your voice over all others of what you would have me to do. Listen, listen, you all know, you all know that in the NFL that not all quarterbacks are made equal. Ooh, I'm going to say it again. Not all quarterbacks are made equal. You got some Patrick Mahomes. You got some Zach Wilsons. Y'all up there by New York. You got some Daniel Jones. All quarterbacks are not made equal. And sometimes even the best of quarterbacks Sometimes the best of quarterbacks, I remember in the Super Bowl how Patrick Mahomes was having a hard time against the 49ers defense and everything he tried, they kept stopping, they kept, they kept sacking them, or they kept, they couldn't drive the ball down the field. And 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 even though Patrick Mahomes is a generational quarterback. He could not score because the 49ers defense was stopping him and, 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 and he couldn't get nothing going. But thanks be to God that while he's on the field, there are some coaches that sit up high up in the booth. Good Lord. And what these coaches are able to see 
They're able to see the entire field. They're able to see the big picture of what's going on. Patrick Mahomes, the players can't see it because they on ground level. They they play in a position on ground level, but 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 there are some people above them that are able to look down, able to look farther, able to see what's going on in the entirety. And what they will do, they will look at what's going on from a higher viewpoint. They will send word down to Patrick Mahomes. And listen, and the quarterback is one of the only ones that in his helmet, he has a speaker where he's able to hear the voice. Good Lord, it's preaching to me. If this ain't preaching to y'all, it's preaching to me. And, 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 and what the quarterback has to do, he has to be able to drown out the crowd voices. He has to be able to drown out the teammate voices. He has to be able to drown out the opponent's voices because the, oppo the opponent's telling him, you ain't going to score. Your mama ugly. You stink. Your breath stink. He has to be able to drown out all of those voices and just focus on the one voice that only he's hearing because everybody else ain't hearing the voice because only the quarterback has the helmet to hear the guy upstairs voice. And we serve a God who is saying that there are times you got to drown out all the voices that are around you. Focus your mind to hear his voice because I'm going to direct you. I'm going to show you where to go because I see the entire picture. I see something that you can't see. See, Patrick Mahomes, you don't see how the quarterback not paying attention way over there because he thinking you going over there. But I see it because I'm upstairs. And I'm telling you, even though he doesn't look like he's open, throw the ball over there because I see it up here that the blessing over there. If you, if you, if you can see that, if you can see that, only thing I'm trying to tell you is as we get ready to close this thing. That there are times in our life that we have to put our feelings to the side. Have faith that, Lord, whatever you're speaking to me in this season, Lord, help me to focus on that. Help me to obey that. Because if I obey it, Lord, there's a blessing in store. Somebody said, Lord, have mercy. And it's a scary quote, but it but it resonates with me ever so often. They said, when it comes to your future plans, when it comes to how to write your future, write it in pencil. May God bless you. May God keep you. Thank you all so much, family. Oh, I got to tell somebody, Jesus is the king of my life. Yeah. Oh, I got to show somebody. Came to the well, y'all, every day. Got to talking to my Jesus. She didn't know her life was about to change. She said, I come to this well every day, and my feet are getting mighty tired. Jesus said, Don't you worry, give you water from the well that'll never run dry. She got to jumping, feeling mighty happy. She just couldn't hold a peace yet. Went to town telling the people all around She put the word out on the street She said, come see the man with the master plan Just the Savior I have found Oh, blessed Jesus I tell you that I've seen him And he turned my life around And she cried oh, I got to tell somebody I got to have 
of some rain. I know I got a friend in Jesus. He wipes all my tears. 